Hello people of the internet and welcome to another video. I'm Lucas and today I'm going to teach you the probably most important React hook, U-State. Let's get started. All I've done so far is ran the command mpx create react app, delete everything that we don't need for this project and navigate to the app.js file that looks like this now. And that is also the only file that we need for this tutorial. A little side note before we start, if you want to build a real life project, you should not use create react app anymore. Instead, create your react app with Vite or Next.js for example. The React hook useState allows you to add, track and update state in functional components. In React, state is data or uh, properties and these states are mutable, which means their value can change. Before we do anything else, we need to import useState from React at the top of our component. Like that. Next, we need to initialize our state by using useState at the top level of our function component. So in here at the top, we say useState. Now inside the parentheses, we uh, have to add the initial state. So for example, if you want to create a counter, we would add a zero inside here because we probably want our counter to start at zero. Now this value could be of any data type such as string, numbers, booleans, arrays, objects and any combination of these. In our case, we want to set the initial state to the string red. Like this. Perfect. The useState hook returns an array with two values, the current state and a function to update the current state. We want to grab these two values that the hook returns and store them. We can do that by adding const, then we use array destructuring, say state, set state. And uh, once again, this is our current state, the first value, and the second value is the function to update this current state. And you can call these two whatever you want to, but it's typical to use the same name for both and just put a set before the name of the second value. If we need to handle multiple states, the best and recommended first approach is to handle them separately, like that. For example, if you have three different states, you have state two, set state two, of course, with different names and, and everything. But yeah, we don't need this right now, so let's delete and move on. Now I'm going to create a simple example to show you how you can update this state. For that, let's change the names here to color and set color. Now, down here in the return part, I first want to create a div with a class name of container. I've already applied some CSS rules to this div beforehand to make sure that everything inside this div is centered and big enough. Then we create another div inside this div. And inside here, inside the curly braces, we can display our current state by adding color. So let's save and take a look. As you can see, now we get our current state displayed. Everything seems to be working. So let's go back to the code. Below this diff, we want to have two buttons. One should change the state to green and the other should change the state to blue. Add some text here, change to green and change to blue. Now let's also add a onclick event handler to each button. Like that. And inside there, we want to call the setColor function to update the current state. There are two ways we can do that. The first option is onclick. We want to run an arrow function and add set color to uh, green, like that. Now, this is called an inline function because it is defined within the random method. The second option would be we could say on click and call a function with the name of change color. And now, up here above the return part, we can create this function. So we can say let change color 
create an arrow function here. Inside there, we say set color to uh, blue, like that, to update the current state. Now let's save and take a look. Our initial value is red, displayed right here. And below that, we have two buttons, and these buttons use the set color function to update the state to green or to blue. So when we click uh, on one of these buttons, we trigger React to re-render the component. And when it re-renders, we get the new value of the color because the state has been updated. And basically that is how use state works. Let's create another simple example just to repeat what we just learned. So let's say we want to create a counter that displays a value and also has buttons to increment and decrement this value. Before we start, we need to delete everything except for the basic structure. Let's say, oops, uh, delete that, and that, and save. And perfect, let's start. First, import use state at the top of our component. Like that. Then initialize our state in here. We want an initial value of zero because our counter should start at zero. The use state hook returns an array with two values and we want to store them by adding const array destructuring, um, say count and set count. Next, we want to display our count. Let's also add a class of container here, create a new diff here and display our count. There we go, perfect. Now, uh, after that, we want to create two buttons. One should increment and one should decrement. For this, we need to also add an onclick event handler to each button. Like that. I would recommend to not use inline functions here. Instead, uh, we just call the functions Increment count and decrement count here. Also use some symbols here. And above the return part, we create these functions. So we say let increment count create an error function again. And with set count, the function we update the state. So we say count the current state plus one. Let's also copy that for the decrement function. Change this to minus and save. And we got a working counter. That's all you have to do. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, smash the like button and subscribe if you aren't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.